You know, it's amazing how you could shift somebody's mood from happy, jovial, good mood to complete anger and resentment. Okay. I have two words for you. Like, oh, Paul's smiling. We've been having fun today. Oh, yeah, we're having a great time. Yeah, we're having a great time. Not that we... we it's always a great time. time. Yeah, yeah, it's always a great time. All right. I will anger this man in two words. Ready? Brian David. I don't want to do it. You can hear Paul, Mario, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. No, you shouldn't hear that. You've chosen wise. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you're cool. <laughs> you, I'm out. Go with that. All right, somebody woke up in a mood. Oh, <laughs> tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> what happened to our show? Guys, this is why we can only see each other once a week. You get no orange slices after soccer <laughs> practice today. What's up? I see draft picks. Well, you know what they say. Genetics, Pee Wee. That kid's not bad. That's the end of the episode. <laughs>Hello fellow Bills fans, Sean Rogers, Realtor and lead of the Mr. Rogers Homes team. Did you know that real estate is one of the best ways to build wealth and right now is one of the best times to own an investment property in Arizona? Please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions so we can take the next step to your financial freedom here in the Valley of the Sun utilizing real estate. As always, God bless America and go Buffalo! We're having a nice day. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful morning. Let's talk about Brian Dable. Is this, is this is this the is this the segment that you all have been waiting for, where I kiss the ring of Brian Dable? <laughs> is this is this where we're going with this today? Because I feel like this is a. Here it comes. Oh. All right. Let's just get on with it. Let's get on with it. <laughs> Here's here, I, you know, this, <laughs> this <is a> great <laughs> opening. Um, it's not about kissing the ring of Brian Dable. Here, you know, we we had a quite we had a question the other day that we ended up doing an episode about. What, are the, what do you think? Because everyone has the rose colored glasses on with this team. You know, oh, they're gonna do this, they're gonna do this, they're great. We decided to uh, cut a video about their weaknesses. Yeah, there's a comment on the community tab. Yeah, yeah. so. What were the Buffalo Bills' weaknesses? Where do you think that they could improve? All right, let's take a step back for a second. Okay, let's try to you know be objective. I know it's tough to do it with Dable because you, uh, until he proves it, we we only have one place to go, which is his history. What is one thing you would love to see improved in 2021 from Dable? Like. I know a lot of the success that you attribute to the Buffalo Bills is Allen being an athlete yeah. and getting out of there. It really is. We yeah. don't we don't officially know if he missed the read, he, he didn't check to the right call, mm -hmm. the line broke down, stuff like that. There's a bunch of different things going to happen that are not Dable. Mm -hmm. There are some play calls that he goes like, okay, why did he call Josh on a sweep on that play? Like I don't, I don't mm -hmm. understand that play. Allen could have checked to that. We don't know. What are some things that you could see from Dable that you want to see improved in 2021 to get you in the framework of like, okay, these are... Well, there's a couple things, right? But I'm going to pick the biggest one that I think is probably the most overlooked, mm -hmm. okay? And, and the biggest one for me is Josh Allen has four gears in his transmission, right? Okay. First gear, second gear, third gear. Oh no gear, right? Oh no. The oh no gear, right? First read, second read, third read, oh Run. no gear, right? <laughs> yeah. And the reason we get to the oh no gear is because gears one, gears two, and gears three didn't go the way that they were supposed to go. Now, is that because Alan didn't check out of it? Well, I mean, you're not a, like he's not clairvoyant, right? Like <laughs> we all love Josh Allen. He's not clairvoyant. So a lot of times teams are going to trick you, right? Yeah, yeah. But good plays 
aren't built to only beat one kind of defense. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, you have to know where the weaknesses are. Once that football is snapped and you start reading the field, you got to be able to think in your head, okay, this is my hot read. This is, this is my first read. But I see that safety drop down at snap, so I know this isn't my first read anymore. I got to move on, right? Mm -hmm. Good play designs will keep Josh out of the oh no gear. And you saw him create so much last year in the oh no gear that it just doesn't, it's not sustainable to me, right? Mm -hmm. It's not. So I want to see plays called and executed, not plays called and Josh figuring out how to make it work, right? Mm. I, I want to see call, execution. Did you not, That's what I want to see. Did you not see that last year at all? I could go back to the last four games of the season, and Josh Allen ran 800 yards in the backfield. He ran for 800 yards. So you're saying it's a, it's a matter of game planning. Because we, from jump, right it's, again, we always said his script was awesome. Right. But that's, we always had a good script. Exactly, Mar. That's exactly right. You take first half Josh Allen, second half Josh Allen, and you watch the two of them pull five random plays from the first half, five random plays from the second half. He'll be running in two of the plays in the second half and maybe maybe one in the first. So what you're saying is adjustments. You want to see better adjustments by Dable in game. Yeah, and I know they scored a lot of points, and I know people are going to be like, Paul, they scored like 30 points a game. What are you complaining about? This is for the longevity of this team. It's for the longevity of your quarterback. It's... So is it a matter of execution? Because let's just try to take a step back for a second. Dable was in New England. Mm -hmm. Dable was at Alabama. They've they've had games where they've played with leads, I'm going to guess. <laughs> you'd think that you'd be able to call better plays when you have the lead, but then does this go back to the running situation? A better running game would it be able to sustain? Because truth be told, that's the only reason the Rams came back is because they, they – the Buffalo Bills failed to run the ball mm -hmm. in that game. Yep. Um, there were some really close games that they had where they ended up coming back uh, after having a lead. You know what I mean? They're, they would get a big lead, teams would come back, and then they'd have to finish it off. Mm -hmm. You know, people, people don't realize how close the Bills were to be, being like 10-6 and six last year. Hashtag Sports is now partnering with MyBookie.ag. Bet, win, get paid with mybookie.ag using promo code HTS when you sign up. That helps out the channel immensely and gets you a double of your first deposit up to $1,000. This is the best and simplest website you can find for sports betting with live in-game betting or even betting the bills to win the Super Bowl. You want to do that? They've got great tools to tell you how much you'll win when you use promo code HTS all at mybookie.ag. Right. There's a couple games that I can think of just off the bat. Like everybody talks about the Hale Murray play because that was one that just happened. But the Bills, there were probably two to three games that they were within, they were one play away from losing. Yeah. You don't get a pass interference call on the Rams, you lose that game. And that's a great, that's a great one. That's a great mm -hmm. example. Um, You're going to be better at naming these examples than me. I, I, little Dory, the, Dory, the, you know, Dory, the fish well, on I, that. I can't remember who it was. Did, did they, I mean, they got four turnovers in Seattle, only beat them by 10. That's very true. I mean, that is very true. That is a big game too. Like they were able to go, go blow for blow with Seattle. Cause Seattle was scoring a ton of points. Right. Wilson was throwing the ball over the damn place. Yep. That being said, I mean, the, the, there's there's games in there that they are able to pull out, but I think uh, I think the loss to Arizona was perfect for them because it refocused them. I think if they would have won that game after coming back, then you think you can come back out of anything, and which is not a bad philosophy to have. But um, so so you want better in-game adjustments by Brian Dable? Yeah, it's I like it, I and do, I don't know if that's it. staff or that's Dable, right? I mean, you yeah. put it. You always. It's just like if there's problems with the offense, you put it on the. You put it on the quarterback. If there's problems with the defense, right? You put it typically on the on the defensive coordinator, right? The the issues here is I don't know if that's a Dable thing. I don't know if that's a staff thing. But whatever it is, it's it's just troubling to me. You think McDermott's handcuffing him? I mean, we've thought that for a while, though. Yeah, like obviously defensive. I mean, from where, from where Brian Dable came from recently, 
I mean, with New England, with Alabama, they put up a ton of points. Mm-hmm. But you got to think, if you're in Alabama, you're going to run the ball. Right. That may have been the reason why he was hired, maybe because they know each you know, whatever reason he was hired. Bama, you run the ball. Right. You run the damn ball. Yeah. Defensive head coach, I want to run the ball. Yeah. New England, you it's ran the ball. Boring, like, most boring offense ever. Yep, you ran the ball. And then you come into Buffalo and you're throwing 40 times a game. Right. I mean, granted, that's the transition to the NFL. Yeah, right? yeah, Teams yeah. Teams throw more. But I I don't know if it's an offensive line thing or whether it was just because of all the injuries last year that maybe my concern is not really all that well-founded because there was just a, a ton of attrition across the offensive line. Right. Mm-hmm. But you did have the same offensive line together at the end of the season. This is it. Yeah, this is it. You did have the offensive line together at the end of the season, and you still struggled to run the football. Like the last six, last six, seven games, you had the same line together. So what was the problem? Right? What? You can't blame Brian Winters for all of it. He didn't play. He didn't play every game. I I just worry a little bit, Mar, about there being sticker shock on. You know, when the Bills are only scoring 22 points a game this year. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't like, be worried about that because the games are definitely going to be shorter this year. Teams are going to try to shorten up the game. Right, but with that comes less overall scoring. In I know. theory. In no, theory. Like, that's, I'm, not, I'm not even concerned about it. Like, you talk about if the Bills score 24 points a game, 22 to 24, okay. Now, the question is, and we're going to get it from the nation, and I know it, you guys are probably already typing in the comments. <laughs> Wow, you guys only think you guys are haters. You don't think you're only gonna score twenty four a game? No, they have the potential to score fifty every game. I right. understand that. The teams are gonna try to keep the ball out of seventeen's hands. Mm-hmm. As well um, as they should. Yeah. And as it's well not a, it's not a shock to anybody anymore. Like last year, Allen, what he was able to do the four the what do you have, forty five hundred yards, forty total touchdowns, that shocked some people. Yeah. And what he was able to do. Sure did. And the accuracy that he had, him able to get out of situations and put the ball on the money, it's not shocking this year. No. They're looking for that now. Right. So don't expect a, I'm going to say, a step back from Allen. This is why he's concerned about the play calling because now it's like everyone's ears are up now. Oh, wait, Buffalo's coming into town. We need to we need to do this, this, and this. And the – worry of in-game adjustments gets revamped because you're like sitting there going okay if Allen starts to struggle and we don't have a guy that could adjust to that it's going to be a long day for 17. you need to yeah it's your your points per possession it has to be higher this year than it was last year because you're going to get less possessions yeah so we can't be popping field goals all the time and you can't depend on your defense to generate turnovers. You just can't. Now, could they? Could they not? Could we be wrong? Could they just? Because we always err on the side of caution. Like we just think teams are going to give them less possessions this year. I say because they're going to try be a little conservative at yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. I use, teams are going to try to limit the Bills' possessions. Let's not be let's not be stupid here. You know what I mean? So within the Bills' possessions, they have to know this and know that they can't trade three for seven sometimes. Mm-hmm. So you may see them game a little bit more. You know what I mean? Like. So fourth and twos, fourth, go for it. Fourth and one on the opponent's 20. Why not? It's early. Let's try it. I'm coming out of here. And then yeah. Right. That's, and when you got a kicker like Tyler Bass, you know, like. Oh, yeah, you can hit it from the. You can hit it from the, you can hit it from the logo. Right? Like, you're just, <laughs> you sit at the logo like. Like on a golf course. His right here? Yeah. His his putting the finger up in the air just like huh? his range is the hammer's lock. 